G'day YouTubers, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's episode we take a look at the installation of the 240 volt power system into the van. So when you get to the stage of doing 240 volt, it's not a DYO project. 240 volt has to be compliant and so you've got to use a licensed electrician. We don't touch any 240 volt stuff because we're not licensed to do so and uh, when we send these vans out they need a compliance plate. So always get a uh, licensed electrician to do all of your 240 volt stuff. Uh, the 12 volt don't have to be licensed so you can do that yourself but we also recommend getting an auto electrician to do that if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, this isn't a guide on how to do it, this is just showing you what we do. So uh, get an electrician to give you advice when it comes to fitting out your van. I'll talk us through the electrical of this. I'm going to make you a YouTube star. The ladies will love you. They won't be able to understand me anyway. <laughs> what are the key things you're going to watch out for? Okay, vibration because the caravan's moving. Um, so that's why we're trying to support all the cables. Yeah. So you don't need licensing for the 12 volt stuff? No, not, no, but you obviously But you've got to have a compliance for certificate for all your 240. And, um, yeah, and the rules are quite a lot different as well on yeah. the caravan. But it's more about the, um, it's more about the movement and the vibration. So that's what we're trying to protect. A lot of the vans won't go anywhere, but every now and again you might get one that's moving every day. So just that constant moving. That this is a great example of why you should always conduit your electrical. We've opened up this to do some sealant repairs on a van that someone else restored. And what's happened is this uh, 240 volt cable sitting there like that has abraded as the caravan moves and it's just about through to the cable. So always conduit all of your electrical. Always. Um. There's a, a, a spec on the amount of uh, cords in the cable so they can't be solid. Yeah. Uh, but domestic, um, nowadays the domestic cable, this stuff, that's yeah. good. That's, that's quite flexible. Yeah. What happened with the old stuff? It's just too rigid and it would uh, it, it went, snap. Well, uh, the original, original stuff was solid. Yeah. And solid is a... Um, mm -hmm. like, I still get to work on it and compared with this, it's a nightmare. Um, especially if you get the one mil stuff, doesn't you double it up, put it in a, put it in, um, make it off, terminate it, and in the one mil stuff which I used to use on the light, and sometimes even when you're just pushing it back into the wall, mm -hmm. it it can it it can be because um, it's not malleable, mm -hmm. it'll just snap. Mm -hmm. So if everyone doing um, housing, one mil, that's what I look for all the time if there's a fault. 12 volt and 240 got to be separated. You can't go through the same holes or same conduit, so it's got to be totally isolated. Double pole switches everywhere. Everywhere. That's because um, a lot of the time you're using extension leads. May not be your extension lead, may not be wired up in the correct way. So double pole switches in both lines, live and neutral. So it could active neutral. I'm in Australia now. Um, it could end up, um, you're breaking both lines, so for safety. And so in a caravan, you typically, you know, you've got a single 15 amp inlet. In these, because they're commercial kitchens, we're running two 15 amps. I guess the, the issue is that it's easy to overload it, pretty much, you know. 15 amps isn't much. Well, 15 amps is quite a lot, but it's all the cool what you want to run. Mm. 15 amps is great until you start talking about heating circuits, mm. kettles, yeah, toast, yeah, yeah, toast driver, anything like that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you have to be selective on what you use, and you also have to um, have a system going so that if you've got a water heater, you can turn your water heater off um, and run that on the one, turn it off when it's on one circuit. Once your water's up to temperature you turn it off then you can use that circuit for other things so if you've got storage in that system you can keep going until you run out of your stored hot water. So it's all load sharing is the answer? Yes and being sensible. Build it like a spaceship mate that's what we do. 
first fit complete, it's time to put in all the uh, final corner panels, the 45s, up on the roof line there. So Paul's come back and started fitting off. Uh, there's the double pole switches. As I said, all 240 volt stuff has to be done by a licensed electrician and that's why he's here. Isn't that right, Paul? Yep. So mounted just here by the door is two 15 amp power inlets. Uh, you can see those with their weather openers, or weather protectors. Uh, you can see the big 15 amp pin there. So they just run from a 15 amp power supply into here. So a total of 30 amps supplying the van. And that just runs through the wall and up into the back of the subboard, which is just there. Subboard in the van with two separate switches, two 15 amp circuits. One runs all the GPOs, the lights and that kind of thing. And the other just runs to the fridges. You'll notice the switching in here. We have the uh, DC light switches. It's a little bit dirty, but we'll clean that up. Um, so anything that's DC 12 volt is marked with this black switch. And the other ones, normal 240 volt, are all regular switches. You notice here, this is the double pole switch. We've installed those right throughout the van. For instance, here's a double pole up above to run the oven. Over the sinks and things here, we're not allowed to put any power so close to the sink. So in the 45 corners, we run down under the sink. There's a power switch there, a double, and that's for running the pump and the hot water system that'll fit down under here. Here again in the uh, 45 corner we've got a double power outlet there, GPO, and then another double power outlet down under here. Uh, that's to run anything that might require power on this uh, lower shelf. In this little corner here you can see we've got a 240 volt outlet and we've plugged a 5 amp 12 volt transformer into that. Uh, so that all basically means that all the 12 volt and everything runs all the way back through the 240 volt and is protected by the RCD on the subboard. Uh, it's just a little built-in precaution. That pretty much sums it up for this episode, folks. Uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions or even you just want to say day, pop it in the comments section down below. Uh, Thanks for those who have subscribed, we've uh, gone over 600. We do need a thousand subscriptions before YouTube will pay us a penny for making these videos. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, we'd appreciate it if you do. Uh, that just keeps us making videos and providing free content and sharing the knowledge about what we do and hopefully what you're doing. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you for the next episode. So till then, take care. See ya.